And Professor Clements with you as we uh, do some more topics in Chapter 30 of OpenStax College Physics, uh, looking to write out quantum numbers for hydrogen electrons, electrons in the hydrogen atom. And our first task here, write out all of the allowed combinations of the angular momentum quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, and the spin quantum number, given that n equals 2, that the principal quantum number is equal to 2. So if n is equal to 2, we know that the list of angular momentum quantum numbers, the L, starts at 0 and then continues, I'll write it really general here, until we reach the number that's n minus 1. Well, for this case, our L is going to equal 0 or 1. We have to stop at 2 minus 1 in this list. L is an integer and uh, starts at 0, goes up until we reach n minus 1. The other number here, the magnetic quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, m sub l, has a list of integer values that start at minus l and then add 1 to that and continue until you reach 0 and then go up to uh, l minus 1 as a positive and then l. Now, now we'll have two possibilities. When L is equal to 0, M sub L can only be 0. We can't go uh, to negative 1 or plus 1. If L is equal to 1, then we'd start this list at minus 1. I'd add 1 to that. I'd reach the 0. I add 1 to that. I reach the, the L. Um, so we have that uh, arrangement of values for the uh, M sub L numbers. So we want to write and then the spin quantum number. The spin quantum number is plus or minus a half. You know, plus a half is one value, minus a half is another. This is not uh, uncertainty in some measurement. The spin quantum number is not an integer, and it's not a list. The spin quantum number is either plus a half or minus a half, uh, describing the state of the electron. So what do we have for n is equal to 2? Well, one case is the L is equal to 0. If L is equal to 0, M sub L is 0. And then M sub S is the magnetic quantum number. To save space, I'll just write plus or minus a half. But there are two uh, sets here. 2, 0, 0, plus a half. 2, 0, 0, minus a half. And according to the Pauli exclusion principle, we can then have two electrons with this uh, n equals 2, l equals 0, uh, m sub l equals 0, two electrons. Each electron has to have a different set of these four quantum numbers as our Pauli exclusion principle. Our next possibility still in this n equal 2 case is l equal to 1. And in one of those situations, the m sub l can be minus 1. We can start the list at minus l. m sub s still either plus a half or minus a half. Another L equal 1 would be M sub L equals 0. And M sub S, again, plus or minus 1 half. And then L equal 1, M sub L plus 1 is where we have to stop this list of M sub L numbers. But again, M sub S plus or minus 1 half. So looking here, that would be the list of uh, the allowed combinations of the L, the M sub L, and the M sub S numbers We're working with N, N equals 2. Uh, our second question, how many electrons in one helium atom can have a value of N equals 1? Of N equals 1. And now we're getting to the Pauli exclusion principle that limits uh, the, the number of electrons we can have in a particular state to 1. There's one electron for one set of four quantum numbers. Well, we've already taken a look at this, really. Uh, if n is equal to 1, then L is equal to 0. The only m sub L is 0, because the list has to stop at minus L and plus L. And there's just one 0. And then m sub S, our spin quantum number again, plus or minus 1 half for its value. The Pauli exclusion principle, then, if we write out in detail, one electron in the helium would have an n of 1, an l of 0, an m sub l of 0, 
and plus one half. And again, I'm writing down n l m sub l and m sub s. Another choice would be an n of one. We're in the n equal one state. L still is zero. M sub L still is zero. Minus one half. There are no other possible uh, numbers to write down because of the restrictions. L can be no bigger than n minus one, and M sub L has to be restricted to go from minus L up to plus L. If L is zero, there is no list. There's just a single value of zero. So there are two electrons that are allowed. There is no uh, plus two m sub s number or minus three or minus one or plus one. Uh, where the list, the possible numbers for m sub s only plus a half or minus a half. So only two electrons. And that uses up all the possible combinations when n is equal to one. So let's take a look now. What's the maximum number of electrons that can exist in an n equals two energy level for a neutral uranium atom? Uh, uranium has 92 uh, electrons. I might tell you helium only has two electrons. So in the ground state, they're both in the n equal one state. Um, but we want n equals two for neutral uranium atom. So if we take a look at part A for n equals two, these are the list of numbers. So there'd be again uh, an n equals one. Um, is accounted for by L equals zero. But at N equals two, we can also have L equals zero. And again, I have to remind myself a little bit, uh, we're not talking about the N equal one level for the uranium, just the N equals two level. So I just need to consider the work that we've done up here in listing out those. This shows us the count of electrons right away. Um, we would have two electrons I'm going to get back where you can see my writing. Two electrons for L equals zero, the state of L equals zero, and six electrons for L equals one. So two electrons for the L equals zero, and I have six combinations here for the L equals one two in the uh, m sub l minus one state, two in the m sub l equals zero state, two electrons in the m sub l equal one state. So six electrons and don't need your calculator. Eight electrons is our limit. That's the maximum number of electrons in the n equals two level for the uranium atom. Give a little thought to this. Uh, this is uranium. What about copper? If I say n has to be two, how many electrons would there be? Maximum electrons in the n equals two energy level for copper, neutral copper. Same answer. Eight. Uh, n equals two. L can be zero or one. There are two electrons always in max in the l equals zero state. There's always a maximum of six electrons in that L equals one state. So eight electrons, doesn't matter what element. Uh, so let's not do hydrogen, only has one electron. Let's not do nitrogen, with seven electrons. Uh, but let's do something that uh, has an abundance of electrons, at least 10. This would be two in the N equals one state. And then uh, we can put eight electrons into the N equals uh, two state. So keep practicing with that. And I think your instructor will probably do some more examples.